Hey guys, welcome to Franklin Woodworks. I'm going to make a picture frame. Not just any picture frame, but a trapezoid picture frame made to house a very odd shaped item. A friend of mine wanted me to make a picture frame for a Christmas puzzle he put together with his kids. And the puzzle is not a rectangle, but more on that a little later. To make the frame, I have to mill up some white oak. So I joint one face of the stock, then put a nice 90 degree edge on it. Then over to the planer to give it two parallel sides. I wound up having to plane off more of the stock than I planned, not because it took a ton to get the faces parallel, but because I needed to get it down to my working dimension. This ended up being easier than resawing on the bandsaw. Once all my stock was down to the correct thickness, I used the table saw to bring the boards to the final width. Now I can begin to lay out the shape of the frame. I need a 10 degree angle on the sides to give the frame a cohesive border around this odd shaped puzzle. Once I had that figured out, I made marks where I would need to cut the joinery. Then I transfer the lines to the sides of the workpiece, which makes it easy to line up the workpiece with the blade. For the joinery, I'll use lap joints. I ran a scrap piece of poplar through the planer to get the exact same thickness as my workpiece. Using the scrap, I dial in the height of my blade. Now I've marked the middle of the scrap to give me an idea where to begin. If you notice a vertical line on my table saw fence, that is the exact middle of the arbor on the saw. So that is the point where the teeth will be at their highest as they rotate. This helps me get in the ballpark really quickly, but I want to start too shallow so I can sneak up on the perfect depth. With the blade height set where I want it, and with my miter gauge set to 10 degrees, I can begin to make the lap joints. It would have been much faster if I used a dado stack, but I'm not happy with the finish my dado stack leaves me. So although a little tedious, I get really good results with this flat grind blade. I altered my miter gauge with an adjustable fence that allows me to use the gauge from either side of the blade. I'll leave a link to that video in the video description below. For the glue up, I'm being generous with the glue for reasons that will become apparent in a little while. My assembly table with slots and openings on the sides for the clamps makes the glue up a snap. Once the glue is dry, I rough sand the frame with 80 grit paper to make sure all the joints are even. This is where taking your time setting up the lap joints comes in handy. This didn't take much sanding at all. So now the frame has the thickness I want, but I want the puzzle to sit inside the frame closer to the front. I attached some scrap plywood as a guide on the outside edge of the back of the frame and I used a router with a pattern bit to give me a straight, consistent border. Then I removed the edge guides and begin to hog out the rest of the frame. I leave a lip on the inside edge so I can have a stable platform for the router. I'll get rid of that later. The puzzle extends just a bit beyond the border on the bottom of the frame. Because the puzzle is very fragile, I'll create a template of it in order to get a good fit on those odd pieces that stick out on the bottom. I trace the puzzle onto a piece of quarter inch MDF and cut it out on the bandsaw. I make sure to get as close to the line as possible to save myself some time finessing the final shape. Then over to the spindle sander to clean things up. I start with my smallest spindle, working my way up to the largest size. This helps preserve as much of the shape as possible. I use the template to trace out the portion on the bottom of the frame where the shape is especially odd. I use a trim router to freehand the shape. The trim router gives me more control and forces me to go slow, so I don't mess anything up. 
Now I can use some scrap to create kind of a flattening jig and remove the lip from the inside edge. As you can see on a couple of the corners, there is only a small amount of the lap joint left. That's why a good glue up was important. Now that I've got a good fit, I need to cut out the shape of the puzzle on the front of the frame. Using the same template, I trace the shape of the puzzle. Then I freehand that same shape about a quarter of an inch smaller so the puzzle won't fall through. Using a fairly large straight bit in the router table, I hog out most of the waste on the inside of my line. Now I don't try to get very close to the line because this oak is pretty splintery and I don't want any tear out to ruin my final shape. Once I've got most of the waste out of the way, I change to a small spiral bit to take the shape down to the line. I really take my time with the small ins and outs of the shape since that will be the hardest part to sand. Then back over to the spindle sander for a pretty awkward sanding. Large picture frames on small spindle sanders is less than ideal, but it got the job done. I also made a template of the outside of the frame. I traced it out and used my tapering jig to get the cuts perfect. Then I attached the template to the frame and using the router table, smoothed out the sides of the lap joints that were just a little proud. Now it's time for the final sanding. Since I started at 80 grit in the beginning, I sanded with 120, then with 220. I also used the 220 to break the edges, making the frame nicer to the touch. For the finish, I'm going to use the best easy finish I know, Danish oil. I start out with a heavy coat front and back, wait about 10 minutes, and wipe away the excess. Then I do the same thing the following day. Another day to cure and this frame is really smooth to the touch. The wood is protected, it has a nice sheen, and feels totally natural. I changed the blade in my table saw to an 80 tooth zero rake blade to cut the acrylic that will go in the frame. I'll use my tapering jig again and to make sure I don't get any cracks or splintering I'll sandwich the acrylic between the jig and a length of plywood and clamp it down tight. For the odd shape at the bottom, I used a backer board on my bandsaw and went really slow. To give the puzzle more stability, I used some plastic corrugated board that I attached to the puzzle with adhesive. Now to hold everything in place, I use some more oak to make these long thin blocks that will screw into the sides and be flush with the back of the frame. So here's the finished product. Some may think that a puzzle is a strange thing to frame, but it's a nice way to preserve something that has sentimental value. Spending time with your kids is something you may not get to do forever. This will be a memory they'll have for a long time. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video, and maybe this gave you some ideas of things to do in your shop. Hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and share this video with your friends. And it may be an odd time of the year, but Merry Christmas. And there you go.